Town Government and Arlington School Board set a, sent a report to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in April detailing the planned renovations that they want for Arlington High School. But what exactly is needed to be fixed in the high school? Today we're talking with Dr. Matthew Janger, the principal of Arlington High School. Dr. Janger, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. So one of the things that's really sort of hard to see, because we made as much good use as we can of the space, but if you come back in here, this is our library and media center. It is packed with students all the time. We can't get in there without alarms and special keys. Um, but the reality is that in this space, we cannot seat the entire faculty. Um, we can't seat large groups. We can, and so it's a much smaller library than you'd expect to see in a school of this size. So if we're going up here, we're going now to the uh, um, science labs. Our classes will often be 20, 25 AP classes or sometimes 25, 28 students. So now imagine trying to fit 28 students around here. You've got to seat people back at the lab tables. Plus you have these nice convenient little posts that are blocking things. As you can see, we have you know, these rooms that are broken up. There's posts in the middle. So imagine 25 or 30 students cramming into this space. In a modern classroom, you want ceiling mounted projectors. But we are not able to do that in these cement waffle ceilings. It costs about $2,000 to ceiling mount a projector. Um, and so what we've done are these workarounds in every classroom, depending on where things are in this class room. We, you know, somebody jury rigged a shelf on the side of one of the posts so that you could get in and still be able to reach the projector. Um, one of the other interesting things is that when they built these labs, they put the walls in afterwards to shift them and make more lab space. The gas cutoffs for the uh, lab tables are actually in the classroom next door. Ah. So if you had a problem in this classroom, you actually have to know and the teachers have to practice going next door in order to get to the gas cutoff that actually cuts off the gas in these classrooms. Okay. Um, and as I was explaining before, um, we don't have, in addition to having labs that are too small, we don't have enough labs for the number of students we have already. We're adding a two sections, so a .24 point four science teacher next year, we would add a full science teacher next year, but we wouldn't have any place to put them. Mm -hmm. Right now people are already sharing the classrooms and having to set up labs either in the workspace or in the back as they're going in. So it becomes a safety issue and it becomes an issue around what it is we can offer to students instructionally. So you can see up here, and we've had rivers of water flowing into the science department this winter. Um, and so much so that it's in almost every classroom that we've had problems. There's a lot of rusted rebar and tons and tons of leaks. Um, we test it for structure. It's safe to be in here. If there's stuff crumbling, we take the students out and then we repair it. So um, this winter was an especially harsh one. Yeah. Did it do any particular damage to the building? Well, it did actually. We had, I mean, we had water incursions all over the building. Again, in this wing in particular, Rooms that hadn't had problems had rivers running through them and ceilings beginning to crumble even worse. Um, along the, the newer building downs by the uh, gym and, uh, well, both of the gyms, the ice dams just flooded in. You can see there's all kinds of plaster damage, which we'll probably have to rip out to avoid having mold back there. So if you look in terms of building, when we talk about some of the challenges in this building, date back to when it was built. This is part of the newest renovation, which is now about, what are we talking, 70, about 50 years old. These metal walls are here because when they built them, they built them with low quality um, sheetrock. And so kids just leaning or banging into them as students will do, we're putting holes in the walls. Mm -hmm. So they put up this sheet metal all around on this side of the building just to reinforce the walls so that they could stand up to being in a high school. They see. Um, another big problem with this building, we talked before about adjacencies, everything's in the wrong place because things have been done gradually over time. So right now we're up here, this is our band room. Um, our band room has no storage, it's basically just a double classroom with a big locked door. There's no storage and the only way for them to get from here down to the auditorium is down one of these winding stairwells. So you'll see kids with all these giant instruments, you know, we have this incredible band program and yet they're just working in a classroom and then carrying things into the back of the auditorium. So the links, this floor is just a passageway. So it's just 
basically an added distance that students have to travel to get anywhere. There are only about four classrooms in the links. Because the wind goes over and under and around, and because this building was built without much attention to efficiency or insulation, these rooms are boiling hot when it's sunny and they're freezing cold when it's cold. Um, and one of the challenges we also have is if you talk about a modern building, this is a hallway which goes nowhere to nowhere, right? And so what this is is what we call an attractive nuisance. Um, there's no real reason to be here and there aren't that many people passing through here. So for the small number of students who are attracted to places they shouldn't be, these kinds of hallways, and there are lots of them, are a real problem. We have 35 entrances to the building and 55 roughly doors. We have something like 27 stairwells. So when you think of modern security in buildings, this building is not built with that in mind. It makes it very difficult to supervise. Fortunately, we have a safe community. We have great kids. But unfortunately, for some students, that's a real problem. And for us, it's a real burden. It draws a lot of resources away. So this is the preschool, um, the district preschool um, playground here. So what you see, I don't know how you can see it, but so up in front of us are the two older buildings. That's Fusco and Column House. Mm -hmm. And then what they built on to make the additional space are these passageways. They're called the links. These ones here and those ones there in order to get you back to what used to be called the freshman building. So if you're going from a class over here to a class up there on the fifth floor, you can imagine you're walking probably a third of a mile. Um, and all of this is being done with only one elevator, which is over there in that corner. So a student who's injured would have to come all the way along here, along the third floor, and go up a floor or down a floor, and then come all the way back here to get to the second floor or back up to the fourth floor, um, which, as you can imagine, isn't great. Um, and again, these upper links here are the same kind of issue. That, that whole glass wall there yeah. and that whole glass wall there is just a passageway. Ah. There's no classrooms off of that space at all. Mm. Um, and that little corner stairwell over there is a stairwell that really goes nowhere except for up and down in that corner of the building because you need fire exits, but you don't actually need um, that space for educational purposes. Mm. So, I mean, in my dream of what we would do with this building, um, this part here and this part here would all come down. Okay. They're fairly badly constructed. They're very difficult to teach in. Um, these classrooms are too small. They have those honeycomb roofs that you can't mount or put any electrical into. Mm -hmm. um, they're cold. They have single windows. They weren't that great a building to start out with. These older buildings, I think, if they were restored and reused, have good bones. Okay. Right? And then you could build above here on this side. If you were to build up as high as Fusco House, which is a six-story or five-story building, you'd actually have a ton of space over here, and then everything would be much more compressed, and all of this space here would be open, and you could put athletics. This is just my dream. Nobody needs to listen to me. But you could put athletics all there, so it would sort of consolidate the different parts of the school. Okay, and um, how much would this, um, these renovations cost approximately? Well, we don't know, obviously, until we've done the feasibility study. I think a comparable sized renovation, rebuild, partial addition in Winchester is expected to be about $130 million. Okay. So it's a lot of money. If you think that, though, the MSBA, let's say, would pay for roughly half of that, that would be some $65 million for the town, but we're already needing to do 35 to $40 million worth of repairs to the building to get a building which, as we've talked about, doesn't work very well. Okay, and um, how would you um, convince an Arlington resident who's a bit concerned about um, tax levels in town to um, support an override to help rebuild the high school? Well, I think, I mean, the first thing I would say is, well, we run, ran tours last year, and I would certainly run tours again. The reality is we have to educate the children of Arlington. When people move to a town like Arlington right now because they want to raise a family, um, because they expect to have a town that supports the community and supports all members of the community. And so if you are a person who's going to be part of the ch raising the children of the town, that's what we're going to need to do. We don't really have any choice. If you're a member of the community who doesn't foresee having children or grandchildren in the schools in the near future, the reality is you're still going to support your own property taxes and your own services in the building because this building and this facility and the education of the children will suck resources out of the town if we do it right or if we do it wrong. If we do it wrong,
wrong, we end up wasting huge amounts of resources on facilities we don't need. The other thing is, the high school is the heart of a community. This building after school shuts down, never shuts down. There are people, adults, community members in and out of this building at all moments of the day. Old hall, which we just fixed up, when we're done with it, they move the furniture back and they do jujitsu and they do dance and they do ballet. There's music lessons, there's adult ed, there's all kinds of things happening in the building. Right now, frankly, we're limited in what we can offer the rest of the community because the building is so hard to secure, because the facilities are hard to kind of navigate around. Um, but you can imagine the sorts of things that would go on in the theater if our theater was up and working and easy to use. Things that would be going on in Old Hall, the numbers kinds of things that we could have going on here in the library. Already we have community um, activities in here all summer long, people renting it for all kinds of things. So I think people would find that their own investment would actually reflect, even for people who didn't have kids in the high school, would reflect back on them in terms of just creating a thriving hub for the whole community. In international studies on the recent PISA, if Massachusetts was a country, yeah. the educational achievement of Massachusetts students is second only to Singapore. Wow. Well, let's look down here. Arlington High is somewhere around 21st ranked in the state. We're in like mm -hmm. the top 10%. So you're looking at a school that's producing, you know, really top educational outcomes in the world. Um, in spite of having these facilities. We spend per pupil in Arlington $1,000 less than the average in the state. Okay. So although, again, you asked the question about how the, the taxpayers would support it, I understand the taxpayers that have a big bill and they have big houses that are getting more expensive, but the reality is we're not overspending on education in this town. Um, our staffing at the high school, if you were to... Uh, bring it up to the state average staffing levels, we'd have about 11 more teachers than we have right now. Wow. Um, so what you're seeing down there in that courtyard is uh, what we call our Enviro Garden. It's a little bit rough right now, but as the weather improves, they'll be planting vegetables on the side. They'll be doing fish farming over in the corner. Um, they have little power sources down there. They're hoping to uh, power one, all of the lighting in their environmental engineering classroom by human power or windmill. So this is Fusco, and this is just to give you a sense of why we have these classrooms that are too small and substandard. So when they needed to fit more students in here, they broke up the classrooms by just putting walls and moving walls. That's a light fixture that goes into the other room. And so they built these walls across and the walls don't necessarily even close off the room. So there's a door here, but there's actually a gap at the end of this wall into the other room. Ah. So if the room is noisy, you can hear through. And you end up with these rooms that are, as you can see, too small. There's the light going out the hole in the wall again. So when they turn off the light in here, they lose the light in there or vice versa. So in this classroom, they've used the Promethean boards as the way of mounting because, again, the ceilings can't really access much in the way of um, electricity. So you'll walk through this. This building often is boiling hot when the rest of the building is freezing cold. That's one of the many things. And as you can see, these classrooms are too small to accommodate the number of students that are in them. For Arlington Public News, this is Julia Bloom.